Hey guys, what's up? Are you one or zero here? This is the last video for our OCB Simulator Hack to Box Machine series. And in this video, I will be covering three medium level OCB Simulator Hack to Box Machines in around 20 minutes. If you're ready for the last time, let's jump in. <laughs> Welcome to off sex certification. Penetration. Test. Better than the rest. So the first box that we're going to solve is Node. It's a Linux box, medium level. And as always, we're starting with an MMAP scan. So as you can see, there's SSH port open and 3000, which will be an HTTP port if you wait until the output comes from MMAP. We're going to the browser for this port, and uh, we'll see the following application. Welcome to my space. It says there are some member names, which can be usernames later. Um, there's a login page. Uh, you can definitely do director brute forcing as always, but in this scenario, I'm planning to check source code. As you can see, there are CSS files, there's PNG file for profile, um, there's some comments, and I see some JavaScript files. So what I will do is I will be going through uh, all these JavaScript codes, all these JavaScript files to see if I can find a directory or file that can be useful for me. And from there, we will actually grab some hashes uh, for some usernames. Uh, let's go there slowly. Uh, we will check all the files one by one. I generally start checking uh, from the end. I don't know why. It's, it's my thing. As you can see, if I started from the beginning, I could actually find a file immediately. Yeah. <laughs> OK. From that file, I'm seeing a path, API users, latest. So I'm going there to this latest file to see what I can extract from there, which will give me the username and hashes. That's very good. If you kill the latest uh, file name, it just goes to API users. As you can see, we have more users actually. I'm just cracking them from CrackStation, which is super easy. Um, and it will give me an admin panel somehow, um, which allows me to download some backup file. Uh, this will be the main, um, main thing that we're gonna use in this box, this backup file. I'm just copying it from the default download directory on the root, uh, what was the file name? I, I had some trouble to remember the file name. I just went through, went, went back to the browser to see what was the file name. Yeah, it happens, my place, I guess. Yeah, my place of backup. So I'm just gonna copy that file, my place of backup to the temp directory, the directory that I always spend my time on. I'm checking the file type with the file comment, which says ask a text. Uh, cool, maybe I should check the content. What kind of content do we have here? It's a huge base 6 for encoded file. Cool, I was just decoded to see what kind of content I could get if it's something meaningful, maybe it can be a password or anything. I'm using the following syntax, cat to read the file, pipe base 6 for minus D to decode and save the new file as my place. I'm checking again the file content with file for um, uh, file comment and I'm seeing that it's a zip file. Cool. I'm just trying to um, de uh, compress it with unzip comment and it's asking me for a password. There's a very cool tool that you can use, which is fcrackzip. Uh, it just checks for uh, known zip zip comments, let's say, zip the passwords. And it gives me already one. It's called magic word. Cool. I will just try it while I'm unzipping the file, decompressing the file. And it will give me some uh, file content. Cool. As you can see, the folder name looks var. I'm going to var. I'm seeing dub 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 folder from there. There should be my space, I guess. Yeah, my place. Okay. Went to the folder, uh, which will give me a bunch of files. The one that I'm going to check is the JavaScript file because before I got some cool stuff from JavaScript code. So I'm just checking it. Um, which will give us some juicy information. I'm going to the top of the page in the beginning of the page, which will give me some MongoDB credentials. That's very cool. The username will be Mark and I can see the password there already. Um, I'm aware that there's a SSH port open. So I'm thinking, why not try the credentials that we just found? Uh, which will work in this case. Uh, so never underestimate this. Don't wait until you have a chance to check MongoDB. You can actually use this credentials to log in. You would never know. Anyway, we're copying the password and pasting in here. We just logged in as Mark user. That's very cool. So next thing I will do is I'm going to check 
what kind of Linux Perl translation technique that I can use. So I need to send lin an nmsh file to the vulnerable box. So I'm going to that directory first. Where was the file? Yeah, it should be there, lin -nm. So I will fire find a full HTTP server here so that I can send the file uh, to the vulnerable box very quickly. I should check my IP address first. It should be 10 to 14, seven, I guess. Yeah, perfect. I'm going to the vulnerable box again. I, I will grab the file under temp directory with weak at. We are lucky that we get this install on server. I'm getting to my own IP address with HTTP, IP address, port number 8000, the one that I'm listening on, and the file that I'm going to send, which is linenum.sh. I am sending the file to the box, changing the permission so that I can execute the file, change my plus x, linenum.sh, and run the file. Wait until uh, we got the output, then let's see what we can use here. All right, the kernel information, uh, current users, etc pass video file. All right, some environmental variables, pad information, available shells. Okay, cron tasks. Mm -hmm. I'm checking if there's anything I can use. Network information, nothing useful so far. Services, processes running in the background. As you can see, mostly root user is uh, responsible for these. But if you go down, you will see another user here, uh, which is Tom. I remember this from the user list in the beginning of the process question output. And I'm seeing that the Tom user is running a file um, under var place app.js, which is a file that we already grabbed from the backup file. Um, this is cool. There's a process on this. So I'm thinking if I can actually use this process by Tom, maybe I can get a shell as Tom. That's the technique that I will use. Um, so I'm just checking the file content to make sure that this is the same file that as, the, as we found from the backup file. It's the same uh, MongoDB credentials, a backup key, etc. Cool, now it's time to use this information. I'm just going through the file to see if there's anything else I can, I can grab from. I'm checking the functions, I'm checking the files, folders, um, all makes sense. Checking if there's anything else that I didn't seen before. I see this user local bin backup. So I'm thinking that there's this file. Uh, you can also see the parameters that you need to use. That's been triggered regularly to create this backup file. Cool, cool, cool. I will use all these informations later. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a fight and code, very quick one uh, with MSF Venom. You can just pause the video and check what I'm writing here. It's going to be a very simple one to get a rush shell later. Cool. I will just save this in an SH file so that I can um, easily tri uh, trigger it in the vulnerable box. I saved this shell at the sage and I will grab uh, this file in the vulnerable box again. Uh, I will start Python Simple HTTP server on my box and I will be sending the file uh, to the vulnerable box and I will grab it with VGET because it's already installed and I'm aware of this. I kind of firing up 8,000 ports. I don't know why it's my favorite. I grab the file shell of the stage. As always, I will change the permissions with plus X so that it can be executable. I don't care um, if this best practice or whatever, it's vulnerable box. So um, I don't mind. It just needs to be useful for me. So the next thing I will do is, since I know the username Mark and the credential about uh, to log into MongoDB, why not use it? Because this video is very good. If you don't know how to use Mongo credentials or MongoDB, it's going to be a very cool one. So if you go through the var scheduler app.js file, you can grab the uh, database name. That's what I will do. And you can also check the database collections uh, from the same file. As you can see, I saw the tasks. These are all the information that we will use later. And I will log into do a DB just like that, Mongo minus U, um, username, password, database name, and I will insert the following comment. You can just check uh, MongoDB references for it. As you can see, DB tasks, which is the collection name that I just grabbed from the GS file, insert the comment that we were talking about, and I will run the following comment injection to run the 
shell.sh file that I created with this little final script and sent it from my own box. If you start listing on a port 9999, I'll get a shell as Tom. Very, very cool. But I agree, it's it's a cool technique and I, I really enjoy that. So I'm just upgrading my shell to a best shell from a sage shell uh, with the famous one I know. As you can see, we're the Tom user. Cool, now I need to escalate my privileges from Tom to root user. I know that there's a um, user local bin, I guess, under user local bin, there's a backup file that's regularly creating this backup file uh, under app.js. So I'm trying to remember what kind of technique that I can use. Um, there are three parameters, minus Q, then backup key, and the directory. We just uh, grab this from the same file. When we do this, as you can see, it creates a base64 encoded file. Uh, this is very ugly, so we have to probably save this file, save this output into a file so that we can actually like play on it later. So that's basically encoding whatever we have under temp directory and um, compressing it basically. So what we're gonna do is we need to go to temp directory because under user local bin we don't have permissions with the current user. Um, so I'm gonna just run the file file backup under user local bin. I will be using the same parameters, minus Q, backup key that we grab from the file, um, the, the directory that we want to specify, temp, and we're going to save it under the name Kalisa. Cool. I'm just checking if it's saved already. Yeah, it's there. Perfect. Um, all right. And the user's Tom, my current user. That makes sense. I'm checking with file, which is an ASCII text. It's the base 64 encoded value. Perfect. I need to decode it now to see what kind of file that we're going to get. We're using the same syntax, reading the file, decoding it base 64, checking with the file comment to see what kind of file is this, which is a zip file. The same technique. I'm unzipping it, but it'll ask for a password. I will just use the same one that I used before that I found with the F cross correct zip. When I do it, it actually gives me um, the files of the unzip version. Cool. So I'm thinking that I can grab root.txt file in the same format. But when you try to do it, it created some issues. So I just found this technique to link the file under another folder that you create, which is going to be a root, uh, root.txt file. And I just create the folder call under temp to uh, bind this file. Cool. And I will use the same technique. I will run the backup file with three parameters, minus Q backup key and the directory that I'm going to specify. And I'm going to save the file as XXX and I will decode it since it's a basic super encoded value with the same syntax that I already used. And I will save the file XXXD, which is the decoded version. You can check with file if you're not sure if it's actually zip file or not. I will unzip it and will use the same key that I used before. And here I am with the TXT. That was the box, guys. Cool. Next box is going to be solid state. It's a Linux box, medium box, uh, and we always start with an MF scan. I'm seeing this MTP, POP3, SSH, HTTP. Cool, cool, cool. I'm waiting until I see the output. I'm seeing James and the version. That's very nice. I just checked online and I saw that there's a remote code execution, my favorite vulnerability. Cool. I'm just reading the exploit. I'm not going to use it from exploit TV. I'm just going to do it manually. I see that there are default credentials root root. This is something that I should know already. I'll do it myself. Cool. So I will be connecting to this port 4555 um, by using default credentials. So this is our entry point. Let's wait a bit. It's a bit slow. Login ID should be root. Password should be root. Cool. Just check with help comment to see which kind of comments we can use. I see list users. This is very helpful so that I can play around with these usernames. Cool. I think you can just set passwords for any of them with set password comment um, so that I can like have full control of these users. Set password. Um, I will use Mindy and let's set password Mindy. Cool. So I will um, connect to POP3 server with Telnet, you, with the username, password credentials that I just created. And I see the emails here with the list comment. I'll just read them with the top comment and um, I will grab new credentials from here. Never send your clear text credentials. No. Okay. Never send your credentials in clear text. Cool. Um, I will use credentials to SSH to the server as always, whenever we are selling CTF, we have to try these, right guys? 
even if it's not the best practice, it happens. Okay, we are SSH, we're doing SSH to the server with the password that we found from the email, and we're in. Cool, but I saw that my shell is restricted. I didn't know this back in OCP times. I had trouble with one box, I remember. It's very simple with Paldron, Jordan, as I said, just specified with minus T as bash and it keeps you out of jail. Very cool. Cool, cool, cool. The next thing I will do is um, I need to send my Linux privilege escalation uh, shell script so that I can just see what's going on on the server and what I can use. As always, I'm going to the directory that I store this file, um, running fight and installation to be server, going to temp directory on the vulnerable box so that I can, I shouldn't have any permission issues. I'm grabbing the file with vget um, on port 8000 on my box. Uh, yeah, and the file name should be lin and message. Cool, let's see. Change the permissions so that you can execute a file. Like I said, we are not Linux admins here. We don't care um, if it's best practice or not. I remember the times that I was doing uh, management on a Linux server. Good times. All right, what am I waiting for here? All right, let's kill the fight and simple HTTP server. It's not useful for us right now. Let's change permissions. Mm -hmm. and execute the file to see what kind of output we will have and if it should be useful for us. Cool. If you go through the output, you will find the following file, uh, which has world writable uh, permissions. Basically, we can just change the file content and execute it. This is, this is going to be amazing for us. Uh, you can also check it with ls minus la option that uh, it's writable and executable for anybody. Cool. So I will just write one liner um, to change the content because if you're changing it with nano or v, if they're not mm variable variable set, you will probably have trouble. So get used to writing it in one comment. Basically, I will just import OS and um, in Python and I will create a variable called Kalisa and write my comment um, with netget to get a to get a rush shell, as you can see in here. Don't use double quotes uh, multiple times. It can mix the comment here. Uh, and I will trigger the variable with OSS system. And I'm saving this value, this, this one-liner in opt uh, temp.py. And I'm starting listening on the part. You can just double check with uh, reading the file if you actually change the content if, or something went wrong. When you check, you already got the root user. Uh, it's very quick, right? <laughs> Next box, Silo. It's a Windows box, finally. So we're starting with an MF scan. It's going to be an Oracle box. If you don't know how to exploit Oracle vulnerabilities, it's going to be perfect. Um, let's wait until MF scan is over. So I will grab some tools. If you're not familiar with it, I definitely suggest you to get these tools in your toolbox for future whenever you have, um, whenever you're solving CTFs. The first one is this one. I'm checking for um, an NSE script, MF script to see if we are vulnerable to TNS poisoning for uh, Oracle. I'm just running it and it tells me that uh, the host is vulnerable. Cool. Next thing I'm getting is ODOT tool. It's a very important one if you're um, exploiting Oracle. As you can see, the ODOT.py is the tool that we're going to use. Uh, I'm running it with Python 3. Um, the first option that I want to trigger is SID guesser. I need to check, um, I need to know a valid SID first. Let's wait for it. Uh, and it's found already an SID as XE. Cool. The next thing I will do is uh, I want to trigger if I'm actually vulnerable. I know that I already checked with another script, but whenever I use this tool or the PY, I'm always checking it if I'm actually vulnerable to this vulnerability. I'm just writing TNS poison. Minus S, IP address, minus D, uh, SID, which is already found in the previous tab. And I'm checking it, test module. It says, yes, you are vulnerable to TNS poisoning. Very cool. Okay, the next thing I will do is password guesser so that I can actually find a user credential for this box. Um, again, minus S, IP address, minus D, SID that we already found, which is XE. 
if you wait enough, um, as you can see, it already found login credentials, Scott Tiger. Cool. Next thing that we will do is I'm going to create an exa file because I can actually upload files with Oda.py. So it's very, very, very useful. I didn't realize that I wrote the L host wrong. I will correct it later. Um, yeah, while well, I was creating the video, I didn't realize it. Anyway, I will show you guys how to upload a file here right now. So we will use the option UTL file. Uh, minus D is for SID, minus U for user, minus P for password that we already found with the password guesser. Um, it will be sysdba um, so that we can make sure that we're logging in as admin and then put file, um, the directory that we're putting, the file name that we're going to save and the file that we're going to grab from. Uh, yeah, wrong slash. Okay, in this way, we're saving the file because of the exit. Uh, before I'm triggering the file, I just realized that I wrote the uh, address wrong. Um, I'll just change it now. Just give me a second, please. Before I start listening on the board, uh, I will just create the exit file again by changing the L host to my own IP address. By mistake, um, by my mistake, I just wrote the IP address as the vulnerable box. I don't know where my mind is. I sold so many boxes all together, so probably that's not healthy. So I'm just changing this file name as constitute.exe, doesn't matter, uh, so that I can basically change the previous comments very easily. Let's wait until the comment uh, is executed. So the file is created. I'm just putting this file as constitute.exe uh, on in the server under C directory. Cool. Before I trigger the file, I will start listening on port one, two, three, four, and I will execute the file with the following comment, but I need to change the option. It shouldn't be UTL file, I, I forgot it. Yeah, yeah let's change it. <laughs> yeah, it should be, what was that? Yeah, external, external table, yeah. We are triggering it with that and waiting for a shell that moment. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a beautiful moment when you're checking with who am I? You're a the system. That's very cool. That's that's quick. So guys, uh, that's an interesting moment for me. Uh, we already finished 10 videos with you. Um, I tried to include as many videos as possible. I think we made I think in total I sold like 28 boxes and they are generally the boxes that I can think very similar to OCP boxes, OCP lab machines or OCP exam machines. Um, Hectobox guys are very good at creating these kind of, of uh, this kind of boxes, but of course there are more, more and more boxes coming. And there are people that are preparing these blog posts to talk about um, OCP similar Hectobox machines. So I, I, Mostly check, they also check these lists to see um, which are the similar boxes. And I chose the boxes from the list that I liked that I thought they are the most uh, similar ones. Hopefully you enjoyed these videos. I, I tried these challenges. Some people didn't understand um, and found this stupid that I'm doing like 15 minutes challenge, 20 minutes challenge. I know time is so, uh, I know that time is so precious. Um, it's very important to manage your time and Definitely long videos are also valuable, but if we're spending a if we're spending our time on a video for two hours, um, I don't know, especially if you're a beginner and if you want to speed up the process, it doesn't work for me. I was always looking for the fastest solution um, and the most efficient one. I'm not saying this is the most efficient one, but hopefully it's actually working for you guys. So that was it for OCP. Um, yeah, it's not my type anymore. I don't saw a lot of CTF lately. It's mostly um, expert development, which will be the next series that I'm creating, probably in the next weeks, maybe even next week. Um, there's a new video coming on a new, new series on expert development. I will be mostly getting the, I will be mostly using the content of previous OCE uh, certification. I think its name changed now is... I don't know, ED, maybe exploit development. Uh, I don't know the new content, but um, I know exploit development is still the same. We're going to still be using the same tools. And if you are curious about exploit development and want to write your own exploits, if you want to know how to do scripting, uh, if you want to learn different techniques, well, it's my pleasure to create these videos. I really love this topic. 
uh, I don't know how many videos there will be because um, with our CP, it's so easy to compress these um, videos all in together for different boxes. But for OSC, it's not that similar. It's not that easy because um, I have to get into details with assembly code or how to write fighting code. Uh, it will not be with challenges, probably. I will just uh, show my screen and try to explain you guys how to write exploits so that hopefully you can learn it. I wish that I had these videos when I was preparing for OSCE, but yeah, sometimes when it's hard, you're getting more pleasure. So guys, hopefully you enjoyed it. Please stay tuned. Please drop a comment. I'm checking these comments. And um, if you're coming up with a lot of questions about OSCP, OSCE, or whatever, OSWP maybe, or in general, hacking, pen testing, bug bounty, whatever, um, just drop me a comment. Maybe I will come up with a new video based on your comments. Stay tuned, guys. Cheers. This one didn't get it to a lose who complete the mob sex certification. The ones who not fall to now weaver. No one to try hard on get free of You must not feel, you must not nigga the bus. Try harder, you must. Oh, say.